In this problem, we're asked to answer the following questions about the given function. This is a rational function, which has a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. In this example, both the numerator and the denominator are degree one polynomials, which makes them linear. And we want to identify the domain, the y-intercept, the x-intercept, the x-value of any holes, the vertical asymptotes, a horizontal asymptote, if any, and an oblique asymptote, if any. There will only be one of these two. All right, so the domain. First of all, as always, when we're finding the domain, we're finding the set of x values that we can plug into the function and get a number that exists, and a defined result, a number, a real number. So what we want to do is make sure that we never have zero in the denominator because that would be undefined. So all we need to do to find the domain is determine which values of x should not be allowed. So if we just take the denominator here and set it equal to zero, or rather say it should not be allowed to be zero and then solve, we will have the one value of x that needs to be excluded. So we'll begin by subtracting 4 on each side, and then dividing by 5 on each side. And here is the one value of x that should not be allowed in the domain. So if negative 4 over 5 was here on the number line, we would be saying, ooh, don't include that. Anything on either side is fine, but not that. So we do that with a union. And coming from negative infinity up to negative 4 fifths, union from negative 4 fifths to positive infinity. So that's our answer for part one. Negative infinity to negative 4 fifths, union negative four-fifths to positive infinity. And we're done with number one. Number two says to find the y-intercepts at given point. So we want to find the points, the, the xy-ordered pairs, where the function will cross the y-axis. Now since this is a function, it should only have one y-intercept. And anywhere you go on the y-axis, x is always zero. So all we need to do is evaluate f of 0. So I'm just going to plug in 0 wherever x is and simplify. So I get y equals 2. So now my y-intercept at x equals 0 and y equals 2. And I am done with part two. Moving right along, we're going to look at number three, finding the x-intercepts. So x-intercepts happen where the y value is zero, because we're on the x-axis, we haven't gone up or down. So we're going to set the whole function equal to zero and solve for x. When you have a rational function, only the top really matters when you're solving for zero. So we're going to take 4x plus 8, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. We subtract 8 on both sides, we divide by 4 on both sides, and we get x equals negative 2. And we are done with number 3. Now number 4 says x values where there are any holes in the graph of the function. Well. The only place we're going to have holes is if we factor the top and the bottom of our function and we have factors that cancel out, uh, factors with x in them. So let's factor the top because it can be factored. At least you can take out a GCF. You can take out 4. And the bottom doesn't factor any further. So there's no more factoring to be done here. And I don't see any factors with x in them, no sets of parentheses that can be canceled out from the bottom and top. So the answer to number four is just does not exist. There are no holes. And we're done with number four. 
the vertical asymptotes of the function are going to be at the places where we excluded the x values. So the answer would be x equals negative 4 fifths. That is the equation of the vertical asymptote where the function, the, the rational function, will never touch or cross. Vertical lines always have x equals a constant as the equation. Next we have horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes occur in a couple of cases. Either the degree of your numerator is the same as the degree of your denominator, which we have in this case, and then the answer is y equals, y equals a constant since it's a horizontal line, and the constant is the coefficients of the two lead terms in the top and the bottom. So we would have a horizontal asymptote at 4 fifths. And since we had a horizontal asymptote, there will not be a slanted or oblique asymptote, which would be in the form y equals mx plus b. So we, don't, we only have one or the other. So we are done with number 7 as well.